In this session, we talk about the integral control action. Uh, more precisely, how integral control is used in addition to the proportional control to make a PI controller. Now, we have seen this on-off control. We have seen the P control. Now, for on-off control, the output oscillates around the set point and the output is never steady at the desired value. For P control, the main problem is with the offset, meaning that output really does not reach the set point value. Now for the proportional control, the offset results, because the control action becomes constant, even when the error is not zero. Now the objective of the controller is to make the error to be zero. So we see that the proportional action cannot do that. Now, increasing the gain, the offset can be reduced. However, it cannot be eliminated. Now, to remove the offset, we need a function that will become zero until the error term becomes zero. So, the integration is such a function that really does not become zero until the error becomes zero so that gives rise to the concept of what is called this integral control now as i said for the integral control the control action is dependent on the integral of the error term so if we're looking at particular time tk so if we integrate the error over the time from zero to tk you will get the integral control action Again, we have seen that we need a bias term, meaning that it is the null value. So at the initial steady state, there should be some control action. We took the example of driving as a problem, that if you're driving at a speed, say 50 km per hour, and in that case, if the desired value is also 50 km per hour, there should be some control action. So that represents what is called this bias term. Now the integral term keeps on changing until the error term becomes zero. That's why the control action also keeps on changing and it does not become constant. Thus the control action eliminates the offset. We saw that for proportional control, there is always offset and that limitation of the proportional control can be overcome by using the integral control. Now, one issue with the integral control is that the integral term is small at the beginning and it start to increase. Now, at the beginning, when the error is high, we need large control action. So suppose you are moving from a connecting road to the highway, the speed limit becomes 50 to 100. So initially you need a very large push on the gas pedal okay so initially you need a large control action so that can be obtained through proportional control so that's why we do not use the integral control by itself rather we use integral control along with the proportional control so this proportional control and integral control together gives to what is called this pi control so that's why we use the proportional control along with the integral control. So for this case, we get this control action is equal to the bias term plus this proportional term plus this integral term. So this together gives us to the concept of this called this PI control. Now here, the integral part also is represented by this way, KC over tau i so here the kc is called this control controller gain now tau i is called this integral time constant so now it's in the denominator so you see that if you have a large ti the integral action will be smaller okay. so now see that at the first sampling interval if t equals one at time one 
Now, if you take the integral of this, you will get something like kc over tau i e that error at time one. And the proportional action will be kc and this error times at one. Now, if you compare these two, you see that the integral term is one tau y fraction of the proportional term. Now, if the error term remains constant, Leandra, what will happen that after time tau i, the integral term will be equal to the proportional term. I do remember that integral action keeps on increasing. So after tau i, the integral term will be equal to the proportional term if the error terms remains constant. Okay. So this gives rise to the concept of what is called this tau y to be called to be what is called this reset time. Okay. Meaning that at every after every time tau i, the integral action repeats the proportional action. So it's called the reset time or also called the repeat time. Also, it's known as the integral time constant. Now, the proportional control is based on the current error. So you see that we have at any time instant, this represents the set point, this represents the output. So the difference between these two represents the error. So the proportional action is dependent on the error term at this current time instant. So it does not depend on the previous value or the trajectory of the error. Okay. Now, for integral action, that's not the case. The integral terms, it continuously sums up the error and it accumulates the influence based on how long and how far yt has been from the rt over time meaning that how for how long and how far this output is away from its desired value so even there is a small error if it pers persists you have a sum total that grows over time and the amount added u by s term now if we look at the integral action we know that integral is nothing but the area under the curve. So integral action for this case, when you have this being the set point, this being the output value, so the integral action will be represented by the area under the curve. So this area will be represented by the integral action. Now you see that at times some times around 32, we have this total area, if you sum it up, we'll have something like around 135 unit. Now, if you represent the difference between this and this, we know that the error is nothing but the difference between the set point and the value of the output. So the error curve will be represented by like this one. Now again, this area is nothing but the same area that we discussed earlier. So at time 32, it was around say 135 unit. And you know that this output goes beyond the set point. And then if this is a positive area, this becomes a negative area. So if you estimate this negative area value sometime, something around like negative 34. So up to this point, you have an area around say 101. Now again, the output again goes below the set point okay and we get a positive area so after when it becomes steady we have an area total this minus this plus this it becomes approximately 108 okay now this is the integral action when the output became steady okay now we see that if you look at the integral action now, after it becomes steady, so at a steady, it's this 
the bias value, the error, the proportional term is zero, and the integral term has some value kc over tau y times 108. That's the represented by this area under the curve. Okay. So this residual value, which is called this part, is added to the u bias. So what it is doing that it's really adding a moving bias that tracks the change in the operating level. So the bias term, when it's at its initial steady value, we have a bias term, but if the set point is changing, so it adds a bias another term and make a make the bias term to be a moving bias. And that makes that's how it eliminates the offset in the controller. Now we see that the purpose of this integral action is to eliminate the offset and it does it by adding a moving bias in the control action. Now in doing that we see that although the output is reaching the steady value the integral action keeps on increasing because it's summing up the all the errors. So this area under the curve keeps on increasing although it's approaching the set point value. And what happens that because of that action, so you can think about this problem for a tank level controller. So you have a set point value, the level is approaching the set point, but it's still the control action keeps on increasing because it's depending on the integral of the error. So what will happen that level will go beyond the set point value. So that's what happens. The level goes beyond the set point value, and then you have a negative area. For this case, if you plot again the uh, error terms, you'll see that okay, you'll have a negative area there because the error is defined as the set point minus the output value. So only then, when there is a negative area, it is start to decrease. And that's why you see that the integral action really introduces an oscillation in the process variable, okay? So that's one of the disadvantages of the PI controller that integral action keeps on increasing and it really takes the output beyond the set point value and only then the area becomes negative and then it then it only start to decrease and it keeps on oscillating and become steady at some value. So the oscillation is one of the issue with the integral controller. Now there is another issue that we have now two parameters that we have to find a balance between this kc and tau i. Now having two parameters to choose arriving at the best tuning values for these two parameters is a problem. Now another problem with this integral action is what is called this integral wind up. So now we'll see what is integral wind up which is caused by the saturation of the final control element. So in summary, the PI controller due to its internal action has three main problems. One is that the output may become oscillatory. The second problem is that now we have more parameters to choose. And thirdly, the integral action may lead to wind up condition.